Hi, you guys. Okay, so uh, some of you might have noticed uh, yesterday that I lost my shit a little bit over an article in Cosmo written by Matthew Hussey. Now, I have a lot of respect for Matthew Hussey. I think he does a great job, but I think he is failing women massively when it comes to dating because he's not telling them the truth about men and when and how they commit versus women and when and how they commit. And I actually wrote a blog post about that, um, really pleading with Matthew, Matthew to tell the truth to women about kissing and men and how it doesn't affect men the same way that it does women. Um, you can look it up on my blog and take a read with that, but I am super worked up about this article right here in Cosmo and it's called the fail-safe way to have the dreaded where is this going chat. Now, I agree with all of the steps in this article. Hey, Nicole, I think Nicole, hey, Nicole, you're kind of familiar, I think maybe with, the, with me losing my shit over this article <laughs> yesterday. Um, I agree with all the steps. I don't agree on the timing. So I'm gonna go through this step by step and break it down for you why this makes zero sense to me whatsoever. And I think both Cosmo and Matthew are complicit in messing with us women because they're not feeding us the right information. And the reason why we have so many unhappy singles, unhappy couples, is that lack of information, the disinformation. And I am, can you tell? Like I'm almost shaking about this. I hate that. I hate that we are so misled. I hate that I was so misled. I hate that I stood in my kitchen at 28 going, no more assholes, because I didn't know something as simple as what happens during a kiss and how it, it doesn't affect me the same, or it doesn't affect men the same way that it affects me. And it doesn't commit people in the same way. Um, so here we go, I'm gonna start. Here's the beginning of this article. You've met a cutie, you've been on several great dates, slept together, and you're even comfortable enough to allow them unrestrained access to your Spotify account, even the Disney soundtrack. But how do you know if all this is leading somewhere? There's no one way to have what is thought of by most of us as the conversation of doom. I wonder if he's talking about men, like males, when he says the conversation of doom. Um, but according to dating expert Matthew Hussey, there are some simple do's and don'ts. Um, I mean, I gotta start right here. First of all, several dates slept together, comfortable enough to allow them unrestrained access to your Spotify account. So basically, you're in a trust zone already. So you have already given them your trust. Let's take it from there. So now, now that you trust them, now that you're in this, now it's time to be straightforward. Right there, already my mind is being blown. Here's my question. Why wouldn't you be straightforward at the beginning? This is where I start to wonder where this advice is coming from. So step one, do be straightforward. Be upfront and straightforward about what you're looking for and never be ashamed if you want something more serious than someone is willing to give you. Agree, 100%. My advice is you have that conversation on date one, before you kiss, before you get in bed, before, you know, I mean, seriously, give them understanding access to your SoundCloud account anytime. But the kissing and the having sex, this is where us as women, we're falling for them. When that kiss happens, phenylethylamine, which is the aphrodisiac created by the chemicals of the combination of our lips tells our brain we've completed a vetting process and selected the right partner. So why don't you want to be straightforward before you fool your brain into thinking you're with the right person? Anyway, be upfront and straightforward about what you're looking for. Apparently you want to do that after having sex. Uh, never be ashamed if you want something more serious than someone's willing to give you. Women can be made to feel like that makes them seem too demanding, but it's better than wasting time on someone who isn't planning any future with you. Again, why are you already having sex with somebody 
who maybe isn't planning a future with you. And by the way, I'm not a prude, okay? I have nothing against sex. This is all about the mindset. Are you in a mindset to just have fun? Then just have fun. This doesn't apply to you at all. Are you in a mindset to get in a relationship? Then this is where you need to be listening to what I'm saying. Because if you're looking for someone who wants to get in a relationship, all of these steps need to be done before that first kiss is exchanged. Because ladies, he's made up his mind already. If you have that conversation on the first date and you say, you know what, I'm already done with my playtime and I'm really looking for someone to have a long-term relationship with, I'm not in this just for fun, what about you? Where are you at? He knows by the time he sits across from you where he's at in this dating game, whether he's dating just to have fun or he's dating to have a long-term relationship, he already knows before he stepped out that door where his mind is at. So ask him on the first date. It's true. Never be ashamed if you want something more serious than someone is willing to give you. But find out in the beginning, before your heart gets involved, what they're willing to give because they know as they're sitting across from you on that first date. And if he says, well, I don't know, I'm not sure, that is your answer right there. He doesn't know, he's not sure. He's not sure if he's looking for a relationship or he's not sure if he's looking for a relationship with you, which is fair, by the way, because at that moment, on that first date, you shouldn't be sure if you want a relationship with him either. You need to know who he is. You need to know if you're compatible. You need to know if you have similar goals. So. Find out on day one before you're in, before you're you know, emotionally involved, before it hurts to not see them again. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then he goes on. I remember someone once starting the where is this going chat with me by saying, what are your intentions? This is Matthew Hussey talking. It took me aback at first with its bluntness but I was suddenly attracted by the fact that they knew what they wanted from the start. Do you understand this? Men are attracted to women who are confident. You don't have to wait until you are in it to be confident enough to ask him what he wants. Do it in the beginning. You will not waste any time that way. Step two, don't be too emotional. Do you know women? Do you understand women? Most of us, and the thing is, I'm a sociologist, so I speak in generalities. So most of us, when we kiss you, we're emotional. We start getting emotional right then and there, pretty much. And if we get into having sex, then we're definitely emotionally involved, for the most part. So step two, don't be too emotional. Well, that's easy to do when you're having this conversation on the first date because you're not emotionally involved. So try having the where is this going when you want them and you feel like you definitely want them for a relationship. Try not getting emotional then when they say, mm -mm, no, sorry, you're not the one. Anyway, step two, don't be too emotional. Just because you're discussing the relationship, it doesn't have to be a giant heart to heart. If they give signs of wanting to keep it casual, be matter of fact about it and say, I'm not really into the casual hookup thing. If you're having sex with somebody before you know what their intent is, before you know if they're in this for a relationship or not, guess what? You're already casually hooking up. Anyway, I'm not really into the casual hookup thing, but if that's what you're after, that's cool, but it's just not my style, but you're already doing it. This lets them know what your expectations and standards are and it separates you from the other people they may be casually seeing. Guess what, it doesn't because your behavior is not matching your intent. So your behavior, you're behaving like somebody who's being casual, but your intent is you want a relationship. This is where you're actually being um, manipulative. And, and I'm not saying you intend to, you're just following the cultural rule, which is kiss to see where it goes, get into the relationship and then see where it goes and then ask him where this is going and then figure out if you're compatible. Um, got some comments here. So Sarana, uh, so what do you do when he, 
this is a long one. What do you do when he initiates to be a couple before a kiss, then you kiss, and then he goes to you, having seen yourself together, um, but have fooled around? He persuaded me for four weeks, finally agreed to go on a date. We kissed, then got together for a second, get together, and then ghosted me. So uh, here's what I propose you do when you're having that, that first date. Um, is, is you say, I, I, I want to see where this goes. I like you. These are the things I like you, about you. Be super genuine. Be honest, right? Like, like, why did you sit down for that conversation in the first place? There was things that triggered you, right? His sense of humor. He was attractive. You know, uh, you saw something in his profiles that made you feel like you had similarities. So you state that. I like you. These are the things I like. I do want to see where this is going, but I don't want to kiss anybody I don't know because I don't want to commit to a stranger. You take out your phone, you flip forward three months, and you say, this is today's date. This is three months from today's date. If we still want to kiss on this date, we'll have our first kiss on this date. And then you see where it goes. If he goes to you before that date is up, you haven't kissed, you haven't gotten involved, you haven't lost anything, you're not disappointed. Well, I mean, you're, you might be disappointed because you built him up in your head, but you, you don't feel like you've been manipulated, you don't feel like you've been used and tossed aside, right? So that's how you can approach that, is just by stating your intent, letting him know how, how your behaviors are gonna match your intent, and then seeing what happens after that, and then really holding out for that three months because people can be great in the beginning and super attentive, but it, if it's not, if you're not what they're into, or if they never intended to stay because they're really just on a roll of like having fun and they don't want to settle down, which everybody has a right to, by the way, I don't judge mindset. I just teach you how to find a matching mindset. Um, you know, so, if you have that conversation and he stays and you get to know each other and you fall more and more for each other, then you have a first kiss that bonds you into a committed relationship that seals the deal because you have bonded and you have created intimacy in the meantime because you spent enough time together and you listened to the words coming out of your mouth and he showed you that he cared enough to put that into action. If he goes to you before that time is up, you go, Whoop. good thing I didn't kiss that one. Um, so yeah, so this, you know, so not my style, this lets to know what your expectations and standards are, which you should be doing in the very beginning. And it separates you from the other people that they may be casually seeing, definitely. When you have that conversation on the first, second or third date, when you know you wanna see where it goes, you do separate yourself from the rest of the people that are playing the usual cultural game, which is kiss on the first, second or third date, get into a physical relationship, hoping that the physical intimacy will create the emotional and mental intimacy that you're actually looking for. Step three, do let them know you have other offers. I completely agree. And the best thing about no kissing for three months is you can date multiple people at once. When, I don't know about you, but most women, when we kiss somebody, if I kiss someone on the first, second or third date, and then the next person, the next day, says, can I take you out? You know what I'm gonna say? I'm seeing someone. And most women are like that. So when you say, I like you, I wanna see where this goes, I don't kiss for three months, this does open you up for other offers. And you know as well as I do, if we're kissing and having sex, chances are we are turning down other offers, which means we are putting ourselves at a disadvantage. But guess who's at the advantage? the guy who's taking everything and hoping we're not gonna have that conversation about where is this going before he's done taking what he wants. Uh, Nicole says, I'd love to see you and him have a sit down. <laughs> uh, Serana, through our four week conversation, he wanted everything I wanted, talked about the future and so on. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. They can last four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, but rarely can they last for 12 weeks unless they are genuinely into who you are as a human being and they genuinely want to get into a long-term relationship with you. This three-month period separates the selfish short-term thinkers from the generous long-term thinkers. 
Uh, I'll try that three month waiting period and see what happens. <gasps> You will blow your mind, Serana, when you do this. I, like my number one rule is I don't ask for anything I'm not willing to do first. This is my number one relationship rule. If you do this, you will blow your mind because what you build during those three months and, and if you watch that conversation um, and you listen to what Shane says, the, the conversation that I have with the three men about dating and kissing, and, and Shane is at this point, I think around day 52, 53 of the no kissing for three months rule. And he says it is unlike anything he's ever experienced before because it helps him create a level of intimacy that is deeper. And he even said, we are finding new and different ways to be affectionate with each other because no kissing for three months means two things. First of all, you're communicating a lot because your lips aren't wrapped up in kissing. Um, but it also means that you have to get creative with how you're gonna show appreciation for each other. And that is super, super, super cool. Um, so step three, do let them know that you have other offers. Letting someone know they have competition is never a bad thing, sure. Uh, you can drop hints that you won't be around forever by saying things like, what do you, uh, what do you see this as? I ask because I've been asked out by other people and I'm not sure what to tell them. Don't put yourself in a position of putting someone on the spot to commit to you. Just be open and, and date people and then choose the right one out of the people that you're dating. Like, like I really don't like this tactic of like jamming someone up against a wall and going, look, you need to decide if you're gonna keep me now because otherwise I'm just gonna keep moving on. Like it's, I don't know, the word bad faith just popped into my mind. I, I just really want people to be honest about who they are and their intentions and their reason for sitting across from each other. Um, Nicole, I met someone and was explaining about the three month rule. Love that, isn't it amazing? Serana, will they think you're not interested if they wait that long? No, because here's the thing, no kissing doesn't mean no touching. And I say, every time he makes you happy, every time he does something that shows you that he is trying, that he's interested, um, you know, every time you feel that warm fuzziness inside, touch him. I say, it doesn't matter what you say. You can say you are awesome, you're amazing, I so appreciate you one million times if you don't touch him his brain doesn't register that you appreciate what he's saying so do touch and your touch is what is going to let him know that you are interested in him you're going to be so affectionate if he is putting in that effort if he is making the time if he is listening to you um, you're gonna feel all this warm fuzziness and you should hold him close, you should cuddle him, you, you should slow dance in the kitchen, you should kiss his cheek, kiss his hand, like you can do so many cuddly, snuggly, affectionate things. Just don't kiss because it creates phenylethylamine, which is an aphrodisiac, and it hikes up the oxytocin and the dopamine that's already elevated because of the newness of the relationship, but you don't lose your head when you don't kiss. Phenylethylamine makes you lose your mind. It puts you full on into the honeymoon period. You miss all the red flags. You get emotionally involved. And when you finally say, where is this going? And they say, no, I'm sorry, but this really wasn't the relationship that I was looking for. You're heartbroken. Um, and no sleepovers means you're not tempted to kiss and have sex. So you create a boundary, which is no kissing, no sleepovers. And, and what that does is it helps you understand, are they gonna respect me? Because somebody who wants to push against that boundary, who doesn't like that boundary, who refuses to accept that boundary, pish not them out of your life. They don't deserve to be in your life because they wanna control you, not accept you. Um, and then the no sleepovers thing means that you have time at the end of the day to think about your day because sometimes there's a red flag that pops up, but then the next thing happens really quickly and it's pushed to the back of your head. So when you say goodbye at the end of the day and then you start thinking about how your day went, if there was a red flag, it's gonna come to mind. You're gonna start mulling it over and you might keep an eye out to see if it's going to repeat itself. Um, and then also, the more you think about something, the more it carves itself in your brain, 
And you want him to go home and think about you, think about who you are, think about what a wonderful person you are, think about when he's going to see you again. Because I say to my ladies, look, I don't want you to get in a relationship with somebody who hasn't carved you in his brain and in his heart first. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, Nicole, yes, touching but not having sex and kissing is just as amazing. I agree 100%. You cannot believe the depth of intimacy you create when you don't kiss and you get inventive with your affection. Um, I have to figure out how to touch without him thinking I'm teasing or playing games with his mind. When you have that conversation in the beginning when you're out front about what you want, your intent, and how your behaviors are gonna match your intent, no kissing, no sleepovers, you state it all, you let him know what you're going to do, and then as he makes dates with you and you see him and you spend time with him and you like him more and more and more, it's, the touching is gonna to, is going to increase, right? It's gonna be natural, it's gonna be very, genuine right so you're gonna have a warm fuzzy feeling you're gonna oh you're so sweet you're gonna you're gonna stroke his arm you're gonna be beside him you're gonna feel affection you're gonna grab his hand you're gonna be walking with him you're gonna feel a surge of affection you're gonna wrap your arm around his arm or you're gonna wrap your arm around his waist as long as you're not you know making a point of sexually and exciting him so doing the kissing you know obviously touching him between his legs, right? Like you're not going to do that stuff. And because you're not letting him kiss you, he's not going to go beyond that, which is touching your sexy parts too, right? So you, you keep the affection on an affectionate level, but you don't take it to a sexual level. And yes, the sexual tension will increase and increase and increase. It will because with all this affection will come attraction for sure. If it doesn't, then of course you don't want to kiss him, right? That's what this whole three month period is about. It's, I might feel this today, but do I feel it tomorrow? And I might feel this today, but do I feel it 90 days from now? Because feelings can change, right? So give yourself time to let your moods and your feelings change. And this three month period gives you time to go through evolutions together so that you understand even before you kiss how we go through life together. Are we a team or are we not? Don't kiss somebody who's not a team member. Um, Sarana, sorry, so out of the loop, divorce less than a year. That's okay, it's okay, sister. We're gonna catch you up and we're gonna put you, not yet. I mean, it's, you're entering a whole new loop. This this is a whole new place. This is better than you could have possibly imagined. You have come to the right place at the right time, my love. Um, so, of course, let them know you have other offers. Number four, don't settle for just having fun. Uh, maybe you should have not settled for just having fun before kissing and having sex. Again, make your behaviors match your intent. If you just want fun, do it. Do it. I am the opposite of prude, okay? I have a rich sexual history. I have nothing against sexual exploration, sexual fun, sexual play. What you want to do, find a consenting person and do it with them, absolutely. But if you want a relationship, you need a different set of behaviors because you want to trigger a man's brain in a way that tells him that you are relationship minded. If you say you want a relationship and your behaviors are play, he puts you into the play category in his brain. If you tell him you want a relationship and your behavior is a relationship behavior, he puts you into the, huh, maybe that's gonna be my future wife category in his brain. So make your behaviors match your intent. Don't settle for just having fun, I agree. So don't just have fun. If you want a relationship, separate the two. So here it goes. Plenty of casual daters will throw you off with maddening phrases like, I'm just enjoying having fun with you. This doesn't make them a bad person, but it's your call now how to respond. I agree 100%. And if you have that conversation on the first, second or third date before you have that kiss, you will find out right then and there. If they're just having fun at this time in their life, or if they're looking for their future long-term relationship. Um, so don't just assume having fun or any such cliche means they're going to suddenly decide they want a relationship next week. Having fun is often code for wanting to stay exactly where you are. 
quasi-relationship limbo. Find it out, ladies, before. Five, do set a time limit for commitment. I agree 100%, three-month rule. They'll be more inclined to move forward if they realize you won't be around forever. That is exactly true. They will be inclined to make a decision that's right for them, knowing right off the bat that you are making decisions that are right for you. So you have that conversation, I like you, I wanna see how this goes, don't kiss anybody I don't know, three month rule, blah, blah, blah. It gives them an opportunity to say, you know what? I'm in having fun mode, so I'm going to remove myself from this. I will stop texting, I will stop calling, I will stop making plans. Those are the ones you let them fade off because they know what they want and it's not a relationship or at least not a relationship with you. And that clarity leaves you free. You're not stuck in relationship limbo, kissing, having sex, playing what I call the hoping game hoping that the attention, that the time, that the devotion, that the sexuality is going to pull them into that relationship with you. Don't do that. Don't play the hoping game. Find out where he's at before. If they say they're not sure what we are yet, respond, that's okay, I understand. If we still don't know what this is in a month from now, we should just be friends as though she's not already emotionally involved. Again, you have zero understanding of women. If we are having sex with you and only you, chances are we want a relationship and we are emotionally involved. And it is not just a simple goodbye, it's a breakup that hurts if they walk away from this. Number six, don't try to change their mind. This is what I'm saying all along. Actually, we had a conversation on this on Facebook today about changing people and whether or not you can or whether or not you should. Don't try to change anybody. Be who you are. Let them know who you are. Be upfront about who you are and what you want. And it goes on. Once they tell you what they're looking for, accept whatever that decision is. I agree 100%. Just find out early. The best thing you can do is show them that you're willing to move on and not try to convince them to change your mind. I agree 100%. Hundred percent. So there you go, you guys. Um, I hope you learned a little bit, a little bit through this. Um, if you have some single girlfriends that, or if or girlfriends in relationship limbo, I want you to share this video with them. Send them a link to this article, and and ask them what do you think? Which way do you think is better? Kissing and having sex, and then finding out where this is going and then trying to pull somebody in? Or do you think it's better to have a three month no kissing rule, see who stays, choose from the best one of that group and then get in a relationship with that person? Uh, love having your questions, comments. Guys, follow my shit because there is so much more that's coming. I am so excited to teach you how to find the love connection that you're looking for to have this kind of spiritual soulmate, you know, relationship that I have with my husband. It is what I call magical and I want that magic for you so bad. Anyways, I love you guys and I will talk to you soon.